other It once shined bright and it would be shining still But they all started turning on each other See, the poets thought the dancers were shallow And the soldiers thought the poets were Above all powers Above all kings Above all nature and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all kingdoms above all thrones above all Of all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, lay behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and
For those who have yet to find it, the place is near where love is moving. Cast off the robes you're wearing, set aside the names that you've been given. May this place you rest in the fold of your journey.
you say, I say. What you pray, I pray. What you pray, I pray. Where you go, I go. What you say, I say. What you pray, I pray. What you pray, I pray. Jesus only did what he saw you do. He would only say what he heard you speak. He would only move when he felt you leave. Following your heart, following your spirit. Done for us. Though the world 
season soon forgets We will not forget who you are and what you've done for us What you've done for us Though the world season soon forgets We will not forget who you are and what you've done for us
so much more than anything I need you more Oh, more than the air I breathe More than the song I sing More than anything I need you more Oh, I'm so hungry for more of your presence, God I don't want to stay where I've been I don't want to camp out and just stay
And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say.
hill Said one old man to the other It won't shine bright and it would be shining still But they all started turning on each other Thought the dancers were shallow And the soldiers thought the poets were weak And the elders saw the young ones as foolish And the rich man never heard the poor man speak And one by one they ran away But with their made-up minds to leave it all behind And the light began to fade in the city on the hill Each one thought that they knew better But they were different by design Instead of standing strong together They let their differences divide And one by one they ran away but With their made-up minds to leave it all behind and the light began to fade in the city on the hill The city on the hill And the world is searching still But it was the rhythm of the dancers That gave the poets life it was the spirit of the poets that gave the soldiers strength to fight. It was the fire of the young ones. It was the wisdom of the old. It was the story of the poor man that made it to be told. That gives the poets life It is the spirit of the poets That gives the soldiers strength to fight It is the fire of the young ones It is the wisdom of the old It is the story of the poor man That's needing to be told With our made-up minds to leave it all behind As the light begins to fade in the city on the hill One by one we we'll run away With our made-up minds to leave it all behind As the light begins to fade in the city on the hill The city on the hill Father's calling still Come home To the city on the hill Come home We were made to be courageous We were made to lead the way We could be the generation that finally breaks the chains We were made to be courageous We were made to be courageous We were warriors on the front lines Standing unafraid But now we're watchers on the sidelines While our families slip away Starts with us tonight The only way
Thank you, Crusade Radio, for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say once again, thank you to Crusade Radio, and thank you to Jaime, and thank you to the Ustream.tv network, the Wiley Drake Show, live right here on Crusade Radio and on Ustream. If you're listening on the radio and you'd like to see what a Wiley really looks like and what a Bill looks like and what a Bobby looks like, just pick up your iPad, your iPhone, Whatever you can get on the web with and go to www.u, the letter U, stream, dot TV. And you will see us there live on the screen, on the air, and we're going to be talking to you. Now, I want to share a couple of things with you before we get into our guests. Our guests uh, are going to be with us for a little while. They have another previous engagement that they have to go to, and so they're going to split. But uh, all of you know here that I have an open studio policy. Now, Bobby, you're going to have to look up because we're seeing the top of your head on the screen rather than, uh, than, your, than your beautiful face. Where okay. am I? Well, you're right there on the screen. Okay, okay, it's I a little you. delayed. You'll see yourself there in a minute. Okay. But anyway, all right, now. Uh, the Wiley Drake Show has a theme. Back before my wife graduated and went to heaven, she and I went away on a trip. We fasted 40 days and 40 nights and spent time together. We had uh, beautiful sex together. We had beautiful relationships together. We had beautiful prayer meetings together. And we decided that God wanted us to expand our ministry. And uh, so we did. And that was about 15 years ago when we started with Crusade Radio. Now, at that point, we uh, both chose Scripture. We both said we're going to read Scripture, we're going to pray together, we're going to meet together, we're going to fast, and so forth. And after we broke our fast, I said, uh, tell me your Scripture, honey. And she said, no, you tell me yours. I said, no, you tell me yours. <laughs> and I said, look, I'm the guy in charge here. You go first. And so she said, okay, I'll go first. And so she said, well, uh, I use the New Testament. And I went to Matthew 23, where Jesus was praying imprecatory prayer. And he said, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. You've been very, very religious, and that's good. But he said, you left out the most important thing. And Barbara said to me, honey, I believe the most important thing for the Wiley Drake ministry 
and the Barber Drake ministry is those three things that Jesus talked about. And I said, well, what were they? And she said, justice, mercy, and faith. And I said, interesting. I smiled. She said, what are you smiling about? I said, well, God gave me Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And Micah said this, what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justice, love mercy, and walk with God. Okay. So during that time, God gave both of us separately, but both of us, those two scriptures. So that's the theme of this program, wow. justice, mercy, and faith. I believe in faith. I believe in salvation, and I think we ought to talk about it. And I believe in mercy. By the way, we run a homeless shelter here. If I didn't believe in mercy, I wouldn't be putting up with all these homeless people. <laughs> yeah, right. I wouldn't do what God called me to do if I didn't believe in mercy. But I do believe in mercy, and that's what it's all about. But at the top of that list... On Micah's list at the top, and on Jesus' list, even more important on the top, was the number one thing. My Hispanic friends here in the barrio would say, numero uno, number one, justice. Well, we're here about justice. We just went through a battle. We're going to hear Bobby talk about a battle of justice that we fought. We're going to hear about another victory for Jesus and the good guys in justice. We may talk a little about mercy and a little about faith and so forth. Uh, in fact, we're going to start off with that today. We're going to start off talking sort of from the bottom up. That is, instead of justice and mercy, we're going to talk about faith. The gentleman sitting to uh, my left, you're watching, to your right, uh, his name uh, is Bill. But I've known him for quite some time now through Bobby. And Bobby always refers to him as X gambler Bill. Bill, why does he refer to you to that in that manner? Well, <clears throat> I've gambled for over 25 years in Gardena. They used to call it the capital of the gambling world before the casinos in Southern California were built. Mm. So that was the place, other than Las Vegas, Nevada. So I, I gambled every week, and... Through Bible Bob, I met a man named Jim Wepper. And Jim, at the Hilton one day, with Bob and his wife Tony, we got together, and I told him my problem about gambling. And he says, Bill, I have a solution. I'll make you up a T-shirt, and if you can wear that T-shirt to the casinos... I says, Jim, I don't think I'll be able to do that. <laughs> and Bob was right there, sitting at the Hilton Hotel at a buffet. So he did make me up some T-shirts, and I started to wear them. And wearing those T-shirts, what did it say on them? Trust Jesus. Don't gamble with your soul. Mm. And I got to thinking about that. I says, this is no game. <laughs> This is eternity we're that's talking right, about right, here. That's right. That's right. You know, Amen. Life one day is going to end. And if I die in my sin, I'm going to be separated from Jesus Christ. Amen. Because God is holy. And God gave us that option. That was the main reason he sent his son Jesus Christ in that first century to die for our sins. So, it was in 19... I believe it was, no, it was 2002, and I haven't gambled since. Amen. We were in uh, the Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, that's when we started preaching out in front of Binion's, right? Yes. Sort of right about that time. Yes, okay, Binion's. because of Bill. That's All right. right. Well, that's a good story, and that's a great story about how God can take a person and turn them around. God can offer them salvation for eternity or hellfire for eternity, and what a choice, you know. Uh, you'd think it wouldn't be much of a choice. You'd think anybody with any sense would choose the right. But many of us for a long time in our lives uh, chose the wrong path. The Bible even says about that. The Bible says, many there be that go in thereat. That is the, the broad gate mm -hmm. leading to hell and destruction. Mm -hmm. And then it said there, but there is a narrow gate. There is a gate to heaven. And there be few that go in thereat, and uh, I'm glad I'm one of those few. 
I also, uh, <laughs> Pastor Wiley, I'll tell you. And Brother Bobby, how about you? Are you one of those few that's going to go in at the narrow gate? Talk to our audience now. There's your camera right over there. Well, by uh, God's mercy, um, I was given the faith by my parents who were Episcopalian uh, young. I didn't understand what it was all about, but the mercy of God was upon me uh, through my young age, uh, my young years. And um, I, like both of you, had to come to my senses, and it uh, was through a Campus Crusade for Christ. It was a, I, I was dating a girl, and we were shacking up in college. And a girlfriend was witnessing to her in the, her dance class. And the girlfriend was a Christian from North Long Beach Brethren Church and invited my girlfriend to go for Christmas. My girlfriend says to me, do you want, I got a girl inviting, do you want to go? I said, yes. We went and a young man, Bud Hinkson from Campus Crusade for Christ, this is back in 60, 19, 61, mm. Christmas, mm. Bud Hinkson in the Sunday school class laid it out, the gospel, and me as a young man, I'm about 21, uh, 22, I heard it, I said, you know, I got a, I got a deal. My girl went forward after the service, after the church service, do you want to go, she grabs my hand, let's go forward. I said, I'm not ready to go forward, you go forward. <laughs> <laughs> she went forward and I started reading the Bible <laughs> I, was, I had to go into the uh, basic training at that time in Fort Ord, uh, California. And between Fort Ord, I ran into some Christians who were witnessing to me. Amen. And so now I'm getting out of Fort Ord. I got two weeks to get to Fort Knox for advanced infantry training. I'm in the California Army National Guard. I'm a student at Cal State Long Beach. And they have a party for me on Balboa Island. They say, Bob is uh, free for a couple. Well, let's have a party. So I'm down there drinking. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend's with me. But I'm arguing and discussing this thing about God and Jesus Christ and Judgment Day and heaven and hell. <laughs> and should I be involved? And all of us got involved in it. And so I finally now, broke away at 2 o'clock in the morning, and half drunk. Party for me on and went outside of Balboa Island and walked around it and gave my life to Christ. And got Amen. It Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Halfway in the uh, between Fort Ord and Fort. And Island. that was in the early sixties. That would be in sixty one. Mm, that happened. That was okay. That my goes girlfriend back. dumped me after that. I got <laughs> two saved. To say, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, the rest, uh, we're like you guys, we uh, work out the details afterwards. But Amen. I got born again. Uh, May the 5th, 1962, on Balboa Island, about 2 o'clock in the morning, half drunk. Amen. Drunk. Well, folks, God works indeed in <laughs> mysterious ways. Yes, he does. And uh, I've not only heard it in the life of, uh, uh, of this guy. I, I remember after I got saved, y'all heard my testimony this morning. I won't go into that in detail. But after I got saved, do we have a caller? I guess we Ruben's just... calling in. Ruben said okay, he couldn't be right. here, but he wants to call well, in. Well, so I he... hope you gave him the number. Yeah. All right. He's got it. Um, every once in a while, you hear that static on there? Yeah. yeah. That's the Buena Park Police Department monitoring us what? to see what's going on. Really? <laughs> Good for them. Wow. God loves you. God loves you, Buena Park Police Department. <laughs> yeah. And this is Pastor Wiley Drake, and you're <laughs> welcome to come on the show anytime. You don't have to do it clandestinely. You don't have to do it uh, on the computer. All you got to do is walk in. The back door is open. You can come right in here and tell us about how we can pray for the Buena Park Police Department. Mm. They've got some good cops on the police That's department. That's right. We're in the same uh, organization as they are. They're trying to keep people out of sin. We're trying to keep people out of sin. Amen. We're on the same We're team. On the same the team. We're on the same team. Keep people right. out of jail. Amen. Keep people out of jail. Well... To God be the glory, great things he's done, and we had a great meeting here today. And Brother Bobby is wearing his medal that yeah. that was presented to him today uh, by much. the Native American nations of the United States of America, and this is the medal that they gave me back in 2004, mm. and then they gave me the privilege in 2004 to uh, give these medals to other veterans, and so mm -hmm. from time to time, I don't Enter, enter it uh, loosely or unreasonable, but from time to time, especially on Veterans Day, 
we nominate certain veterans to receive those medals. And mm -hmm. so, fellas, if y'all will look at the camera, my cameraman's motioning to me. Mm -hmm. look, look at the, uh, show your medal, Bobby, is what he's trying to do. He's saying, hold your medal. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And I left mine in the car. Oh, okay. Well, here, here, is, the, here is my medal. And uh, I, I was very proud to receive that. And fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. that's how... Uh, uh, I started doing this. See, I received the medal in 204, and I went to the man who gave me mine, and his name was Marshall Cerna. Marshall Cerna was a Vietnam War veteran, was mm. wounded two or three times, received several medals from uh, the United States government, and when he got out, because he was a part of the uh, Native American nations, he said, we ought to have medals for our Indian veterans is the way it started out. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I don't want to be selfish. Any veteran ought to be able to receive that medal. And so, therefore, uh, I was given one back in 204. And I told him, I said, I really appreciate it. I was very humbled by it. And I said, but I would like to pass, I'd like to have you pass some of these medals along to these guys. And, and Marshall said, well, Wiley, why don't we just authorize you to do it? And so they have, and I've continued to do that. Today I gave out, uh, I don't know, about 15 medals, and that was uh, number 15 or 16 in, in several hundred that we've given out uh, over the years. And we do them always at uh, Veterans Day, but we do them other times as well. If you have a friend, if you're a veteran or you have a friend mm -hmm. and you'd like to nominate them, all you got to do is get in touch with me. We'll be more than happy to uh, to set it up for you. You could come to our church and uh, receive the medal uh, or whatever. And or if you belong to the VFW or, uh, you know, one of those organizations, we'd be glad to come there and do presentations and so forth. That's just part of our ministry here at the Wiley Drake Show. Now, one of the other ministries that we get involved in, we really believe, ladies and gentlemen, that we ought to be involved in justice. About 12 years ago, I heard of a great injustice. Now, you got to remember, I'm a veteran, Vietnam War veteran. Mm -hmm. And I heard of a cross that was out in the Mojave Desert. Never yeah. had seen it. I'd driven by there, but I never saw the cross. But I heard that the uh, bad guys, the ACLU and an atheist, didn't like the cross being up there. Been up there for 50 years at that time, 48 years, something like that. They didn't like that cross. You can see it on the screen if you're watching. Yeah. There's the cross. Mm -hmm. They didn't like it, and so they said, you got to take it down. And they took it to court, and the court said, yeah, you got to take it down. We fought the court. We went against the injustice, and they boarded it up. At one time, there was a picture of the cross up there, and it was just uh, looked like uh, two sheets of four by eight plywood up there because they covered up the cross. Well, we got behind that. We got involved in it, and we started talking about it and started talking to some folks. And we found out that uh, 60 years ago, there it is with the boards up on it. Uh, that's when they put the boards up on the, on the cross yeah. up there. Now, uh, we found out that a guy by the name of Riley back uh, 60 years ago said, we're going to put this up here to honor World War I veterans. Mm -hmm. And then later they decided they were going to let that, not only honor World War I veterans, but any veteran. Now, at that point, uh, he and his, uh, this, this gentleman was an elderly gentleman, and, and he went to a friend of his, uh, and that friend's name was Henry, and his wife's name was Wanda Sandoz, and he said, I'm not going to last much longer. I'm going to heaven pretty soon. Would you uh, take care of the cross, please, for me? And so they said they would, and for 30 years they took care of the cross. And then the cross was stolen. And you'll see right there on that picture, mm -hmm. a picture that my correspondent for the Wiley Drake Show, Bobby mm -hmm. Bible, took as they put that cross back up on the rock. Mm -hmm. And that was on Sunday on Veterans Day yeah, yesterday. at 11 o'clock in the morning. They put the cross up, and it is now back up there, beautifully standing there. Now... What happened? It went through all the courts, lower courts, middle courts, all the way to the Supreme Court. And an organization called Liberty Institute, a group of lawyers who fight for us street preachers and cross people and get in trouble with the law and, and so forth. And so they fought for 12 years 
uh, the Supreme Court, took it all the way to the Supreme Court, and uh, didn't charge a dime to this dear couple that was there. And In fact, paid their way to Washington, D.C. when they went to the cross mm -hmm. uh, case there. And uh, so on Sunday, uh, the veterans, Bobby Bible and others, put that cross back up on the rock, and it is back up on the rock. Now, one of the... Uh, you know, we talk about veterans and we talk about what they sacrificed and so forth. And uh, Henry uh, was not a veteran, but he sacrificed for that cross. He loves veterans. Yeah. And the way he sacrificed is this. Earlier in their life, he and his wife bought a piece of property out there in the desert, five acres, in fact. And when it came right down to the final debate and final thing with the court, the court said it's okay to leave it up there, but you've got to change the property. And so Henry and Wanda said, look, we have five acres. Why don't we swap our five acres for one acre there on the rock, Sunrise Rock? And the courts agreed to that, and the government agreed to that. And so they dedicated their five acres and gave that to the preserve and got one acre there. And instead of even keeping it in their last name, keeping the property in their name, they didn't want to have problems. And so they put the property in the name of the VFW. That's the Veterans of Foreign War. And, Bobby, I believe you're a member of that organization, aren't you? The no, VFW? No, I'm not. American Legion. American Legion. American Excuse Legion. me. All right. Anyway, uh, they put it in that name, and the cross will be there till Jesus comes. And when Jesus comes, I don't care what to do with it. Then. Praise the Lord. <laughs> they take it down if they want to. I don't care because I'm going to be in heaven. Amen, I'm going to see the man who hung on the cross. Amen, brother. And uh, Amen. so anyway, Bobby went out there and covered it for us. And uh, Bobby has covered some other things for us in the past when I was not able to be there. And uh, we praise the Lord for the opportunity to have people like Bobby cover that. Thank the Lord for... And we thank God um, for you getting us involved at Mount Soledad Cross. And Dennis Agajanian showed up there when you had us at the Soledad Cross down on the San Diego Freeway. And that was San exactly Diego. the truth. And we're, we're... Let's see who this is. Hope that's Ruben. Good, after, good afternoon, my brother. How you doing, Pastor? I'm doing fine. This, hey, sounds, this sounds like a Reuben to me. Reuben Israel. <laughs> Hey Reuben, would you do me a favor? Can I give you another number to call in on, and you'll be a better, you'll have, we'll have a better connection. I will do that. It's 800-839-3048. 3048? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Eight. No, I'm sorry. Let me give it to you again. One 839-3048. Call that number, and that will put you on a landline, and we'll hear you better. You got it. Thank you, brother. All right. You know, that number I gave him by mistake is the number that was on our line for years and years, and you just don't forget those numbers. <laughs> Bill's going to call you Wednesday morning on your uh, that line, I think, and give him a report on his tram the talk uh, show. witness. All right. The tram witness. And what time, what time are you on the tram? He's on the tram all Tuesday. day tomorrow. Tuesday. No, no, but what, what time do you go on? I go on at noontime. At noontime, okay. Noon. All right, is that you, Reuben? Yes, it is. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, my brother, and we've got a much better connection now, and I thank you for that, and uh, thank you for calling. Ladies and gentlemen, one of Bobby Bible's friends, a friend and a brother in the Lord, you've heard me talk to him. You've heard me talk about him. And most of the stuff that I've said has been pretty good, Reuben. So. <laughs> but uh, Reuben is uh, a street preacher and a mighty man of God. Reuben, um, give us a rundown uh, sort of on your most current event. Where did, where did you go the last time you were out there on the battlefield? Well, I've been uh, I've been all over, of course. And uh, But I went first off saying uh, to uh, every veteran that's out there, uh, I thank you for... Um, for what you've done, your service for this country. If it were not for you, it would be oh, very right difficult for people like me to have free speech on that public sidewalk. That Constitution, <laughs> our Bill of Rights, our First Amendment, everything about this country uh, has, has nothing to do with anything. It's just a blank piece of paper if it is not, if it is not backed by the bloodshed of, of those soldiers 
who have died uh, and spent their blood uh, for our freedom. And so uh, today is uh, Honorary Veterans Day, and uh, I do want to thank every military personnel who has invested time uh, in the armed forces and for even their families who supported them. Uh, a deep salute uh, from this open-air preacher and a thank you to them. Amen. Well, Reuben, uh, tell our listening audience, you know, I have a wide variety of people who listen to my program all you got to do is look right here. You got a Southern Baptist country preacher, you got a street preaching Bobby Bible, and you've got ex Gambler Bill. And uh, we have a lot of different people that listen to our show. Now, you referred to yourself as a street preacher. Tell our listening audience that might not know what that is what is a street preacher? Very well. It, it's found in the Bible. Amen. Uh, Noah was a street preacher. The Bible teaches that he uh, he went around and preached uh, uh, about uh, the judgment of God coming. And uh, the Bible says that uh, he was a preacher of righteousness. That's what the Bible Amen. says in the New Testament about Noah. The Bible says Isaiah was a street preacher. Isaiah 58, 1, the Bible says that uh, to cry out loud, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Isaiah 58, 1. We have numerous verses of men of God who publicly preached like a Jonah who cried in Nineveh. John the Baptist was a voice crying in the wilderness. Uh, the Bible teaches in John chapter 7, Jesus cried out loud. Peter, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, lifted up his voice. A, oh, a, a street preacher is somebody who goes out and preaches. Unlike giving somebody a gospel track, uh, they have the option to say no. Whereas when you preach it, they hear it in their ears. You gave them no option, and whether they want to hear it or not, they hear the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And so what we do is we take the same message that Pastor Wiley and other good men of God preach from the pulpit, and we take that message to ears who need to hear it. We take it on the sidewalk, in the open marketplace, in the campuses, and venues across this country, and we don't give them the option. Uh, when they walk by us, we preach to them. Amen. In fact, people like Bob and myself, in, in our lives of preaching, have led millions and millions of people to the Lord. Now, what they do with that information is now up to them up and up to God. But when they walk by us, they see our signs, they see our T-shirts, they hear the preaching. They are led to the Lord. Now, what they do with that information from that point is up to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Well, God bless you, Reuben, and thank you so much for uh, being on with us tonight. We've got uh, Bobby and Bill here, and we're talking about the day where we had about 15 veterans receive a Warrior's Medal of Valor. And Bobby, of course, received his. And we we're very gracious and very glad to have him here. And he's been working as our correspondent for the Wiley Drake Show. And uh, one of the things that somebody asked me not too long ago, this is in fact two or three years ago when I was in the media even more than I am now, but somebody said, P Pastor, why are you out there on the street? I was at the Academy Award. What are you doing here? Why are you here? I said, see that guy right over there? It's all his fault. And I pointed to Bobby because Bobby challenged me. I'd, I've mostly been a what I would call a church preacher behind the pulpit in the church. And then I began to find out that there were things out there that needed to be done. And I would go to certain rallies and so forth. And uh, uh, then I got to seeing these guys like you and Bobby and others. And the Lord threw your testimonies, the Lord through his Holy Spirit convicted me that I ought to try to get out there. And so mm -hmm. I try to get out there as often as I can. Amen. And uh, I have been to the Academy Awards and been to ball games and mm -hmm. been out on the street from time to time. And in fact, even go out here on the sidewalk in front of my church some Sundays and just preach a little while yeah, before church. There you go. Amen. By those nice crosses you got up there. Oh, my God. We have, have Christians in a union. Amen. You have Christians who will go to a union, go to, to pay their dues and have their meetings, and one day their union leader 
might say, fellas, I did not get that 5% pay raise. I tried. We tried to negotiate. They didn't allow it. You know what? We're going on strike. And that same Christian will hold a sign with a union number on the sidewalk and think nothing about it. I say if you can hold the sign for a politician, for your union, uh, why not, for heaven's sake, hold a sign for the gospel? Amen, Amen. Well, Amen. brother, you're absolutely right, and that kind of preaching is what convicted me. The first time I went out on the streets wasn't to be a street preacher. The first few times I went out there was way back a long time ago with Operation Rescue and a few other organizations taking a stand against killing babies. Yeah. And I should have done that. But Amen. then I realized that if I could do that, why can't I just go out there not only to talk about killing babies, but talk about the positive side, that is, come to know Jesus, get saved, and spend eternity in heaven. Amen. So Amen. I began to do some street preaching and still do, thanks to you and Bobby and other men that God used. Uh, to bring me you don't to need to be a street preacher. God, I'm sure, is going to set people up in a lot of different atmospheres. The body of Christ is large, but for heaven's sake, we need to testify about Jesus. Yes. Amen. The Great Commission is just that. It's not a ministry. Preaching Jesus Christ is our duty. Amen. Amen. And Pastor, well, once again, I want to salute all the soldiers who are out there that amen. people like me the right to stand on that public sidewalk and, pro and, and promote Jesus Christ. It amen. is by their shed blood uh, that I can stand on that sidewalk. It is by the bloodshed of Jesus Christ that I can tell people about salvation. Amen. Amen. So amen. On my end, Pastor, and I appreciate the opportunity to let me say something uh, on your radio and TV program. Hey, Reuben, uh, excuse me, Pastor. Reuben, we're, Bill and I are leaving here. We're going to meet you at for dinner and Bible study right after this. So we'll see you in a few minutes. God bless you. You guys drive safely. And All thank right. you, Pastor Wiley. Hey, Reuben, before you go, before you go, help my listening audience. If there's somebody out there, a preacher or a young person or even an old person like me or Bobby, and they think, hey, you know, I ought to check this out. Where can they go online? You know, we're living in a day of computers. Where can they go to find out a little bit more about you and your ministry? Yes. And also about how they can support your ministry by not only praying for you, but making a donation. Tell them how to do that. Thank you, Thank Pastor. You, Pastor. Everyone believes that we are living in the last days. We have to understand and backtrack what brought in Jesus Christ and, 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 and the New Testament was a man by the name of John the Baptist. Amen. He actually went out and preached and opened up the doors and made the pathway ready for the coming of the Messiah. Mm. I say, Pastor Wiley, if this is last days, our, our ground is now a little bit bigger than Jordan. We now have to go to the whole world and let everyone know that the Messiah is coming back. We are looking for John the Baptist. If you are tired of sitting in a pew, if you think there's more to Christianity than Sunday, Wednesday, and watching TBN at night, uh, I say contact us. We will put you to work. How do we contact you? Find you? us on Official Street Preacher. Uh, just look up Street Preacher on any Google search engine, and you're going to come across our website. And with that, uh, you'll find uh, a lot of videos, Bible verses. You're not alone. Uh, there are many people out there who want to do more for God. And, uh, uh, you know, in this last days, we are needing men like John the Baptist who will prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Amen. So uh, uh, official street preacher is there. And if you can't go out, uh, there is a P.O. box, and there's also a place where you can pay online if you wish to uh, kick in a couple of dollars. Amen. And so, uh, uh, you know, you can have your fingerprints on guys like us who are not ashamed and who take the gospel out publicly whether they want to hear or not. Amen. Well, Reuben, praise the Lord, brother. God bless you, yeah. and thank you for being on with us, and thank you for what you do out there. And we want you to know uh, I'm a preacher, and I practice what I preach. 
And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, I preach that you pray for this man and these men. Yeah. And I also preach that you ought to give to them. And I pray that you'll do the same thing as I do. Let us give to them. Let us put feet to our prayers. And let us tell more people about Jesus. Thank you, uh, Ruben. God bless. Pastor, you did put your uh, your your words to actual action, and uh, you had promised a, a certain donation, and uh, you did. And uh, I want to let everybody know, Pastor Wiley doesn't just talk. <laughs> There's always action behind his words. You can go to the bank on that. If he says he's going to do something, you can go to the bank on that. And so uh, what a man with character. Well, brother, I just got to do what God tells me to do, and I like to be a good preacher. I like to practice what I preach. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. God bless you. Have a great evening and a great time with these fellows a little later. They're free to leave any time they want to. I've got to be here another 28 minutes, but they're welcome to bail out on me any time they want to. Call them, brother. I'll see them shortly. God bless you. All right, brother. God bless you, and thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, if I could, Pastor Wiley. Yes, sir. I want to follow up on a little bit of the rewards uh, thing we were talking about for the medals. Okay. And uh, Bill has a tram ministry, uh, if you could give him. What, what happened after we broke away? he broke away from gambling? We started preaching outside the casinos. Weber preached on the strip. We had all the casinos outside. Then uh, Bill branched into this ministry to share a little bit. Any man out there in any city that's next to a subway, uh, Bill was is going to share with you how you can get on that subway, go from car to car, <clears throat> preach a little bit, witness yeah. for Jesus Christ at no big costs, and it's out there in every city. Tell him, okay. Bill. Well, I live in Long Beach, uh, and I preach the word on the Metro Blue Line. I start off from Long Beach, California. And I go into Los Angeles. Amen. And there are six cars, and I spend approximately 10 minutes on each car. And I come to the people, and I tell them exactly what I'm doing there. I tell them I'm giving them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you got a big cross. And I have a cross. And Amen. the cross says, Jesus saves. Hallelujah. Okay. And I have another brother, and his name is Robert Shamfelt. I don't want to leave him out. Amen. And he hands out tracks Amen. on the metro line. He goes to each seat, and the cars are completely crowded. So <laughs> when we're given the word, we're telling the people that Jesus loves you to come to him to make a commitment. Yeah. And the reason we do this is because... We live in a troubled world. Amen. And this world is full of despair. Yes. And we can see uh, by what's happening right now with our presidency, with our government, mm. okay? Yes. The Democratic Party. So I just want to give this message to the people Amen. and show them the love of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. And tying it together with the theme of the show... Bill and us, outdoor preachers. Reuben is America's number one event preacher. Jed Smock is the number one campus preacher. And Pastor Wiley has hosted Jed Smock yes. at this very church. Been on this program. On this program. Yeah. And Weber also. Yes. From the yes. north. Yes. Now, by faith we do this. By faith in God. And faith, all of us trust, including Wiley, 100%. We have faith in the Holy Spirit yes. leading us guiding our words, giving us a good attitude about it, a good spirit. And John 16, 7 through 16, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and of judgment. So Amen. by faith, we do it. It is just that we do it, justice, faith and justice, because we are going to heaven. Hey, we're cool. Hey, we got it made. But we need it's fair and just to share it with the rest of the human Amen. race. Amen. Give them a chance Amen. to make the call, right? Amen. And by God's mercy, Amen. none of us are perfect. We've all stumbled along the way, including me. But by the blood atonement of Jesus Christ on that cross, Amen. which we all preach, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, the gospel, the death, the burial, the blood atonement, the resurrection and the second coming of Jesus Christ, by his mercy, he allows us to represent him. Amen. So it's Amen. by faith, it's by justice, and it's by mercy that we all function in Jesus' name. 
for the glory of God. Amen. 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 And ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to come back later and get a copy of this video, it'll be available to you. You can go to our website. And I'm going to tell Jaime today, we're going to title today's show, Street Preaching. That's the title of the show today. We talked about church preaching. We also talked about putting the cross back up and so forth. But the overall title of this show is Street Preaching. Tell your friends. You want to know about street preaching? Go listen to the Wiley Drake Show. It's on That's there. Right. When we finish tonight, just moments after we're off the air at the top of the hour, it will be on the web and you can tell people to go there. The way they go is just go to www.u, the letter U, stream.tv. Ustream.tv, put in Wiley Drake Show, and you'll be able to see this show over and over and over again. And uh, if Bobby or Bill wants to tell their friends they were on the Wiley Drake Show, uh, some of them may say, no, nah, Wiley wouldn't have Bobby Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bobby, you got proof now that, <laughs> that's you, right. sure that you were on my show. and uh, But seriously, folks, that's why we're here. Yeah. That's why we archive it, because we want God to use it over and over and over and over again. And and he will. And uh, I, I, I had a lady call me just today, mm -hmm. and she said, I want to talk to you about my circumstance. I want to talk to you about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I need Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I had the privilege to talk to her. Yeah. And lead her to Jesus say over what? the telephone. Wow. Now, I say that not to brag on me, but to brag on God. And after we got through, I talked to her and told her to try to find a church where she was located. She told me where she's located. She's not anywhere near here. And so I said, you, you let me know. And I got her phone number. And I said, I'm going to sick a preacher on you so you can get in a local church you where you're at. Mm -hmm. And so after we got through talking, I said, by the way, uh, what prompted you to call me? She said, about a year ago, I was going on TV, and I saw the Wiley Drake Show, and I thought, what in the world is a Wiley Drake Show? And she said, I tuned in on it, and I listened, and what you said made sense to me. She said, that was over a year ago. Wow. Well, it's making a lot of sense to the, yeah. to the brothers that were here today that gave awards. Amen. And enjoyed this church uh, honoring veterans. Amen. And uh, Bill and I are going to uh, run over to Rubens for a free dinner and a hey, Bible study if no. we can uh, Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. And I'd like to have just a prayer. Lord, Please just, lead us in prayer. Lord, we just pray <laughs> for, and I pray especially for the fallen Christian young men from good churches and good homes that went into yeah, the high warm. school, graduated, served their country, and Lord, they were killed. Oh, mm. Lord not having to uh, the chance to enjoy this life at all. Lord, we just pray your mercy by faith. By faith. Lord, we pray your mercy upon these fallen veterans who gave it all, like Jesus, like you did on that cross. You're the example. You yes. laid your life down that we might be set free. And so did these veterans mm. that uh, Wiley's yeah. honoring today, and we're honoring. And it's by our faith we're pleading your mercy, and it's just. Lord, that they get a good reward. Amen. And we'll Amen. give you the glory Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, fellas. Thank you, Bill. All Thank right, you, Bobby. Bobby. God bless you. Enjoy your fellowship. When I finish up here, about the time y'all get there, I'm going to get off the air, and I'm going to go and be with my nine grandchildren. Say what? Today? Today. After as, soon as, show, as soon as the program's over, I'm going to go and have uh, dinner with my kids. Wow, you got nice. your hands full oh, there. Yeah. Well, buddy. you know, the Lord blessed me. I had six grandkids. <laughs> my daughters gave me six grandkids. And then one of my daughters recently gave me three more. Wow. She adopted two little girls and a little boy. Amen. And on Wednesday night, as a matter of fact, I'm going to an adoption ceremony for those three kids. So I went from six grandkids to nine just overnight. Be fruitful and multiply. Amen. 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 It's right here on the Wiley Drake Show. Right here on the Wiley Drake Show. God bless you guys. Good right. night, Mr. Chan. Good to see you, buddy. Good night. God bless. Yeah, amen, brother. All right, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Until Wiley Drake Show. Right, God bless ladies. you, brother. God bless you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we only have about, uh, let's see, about 16 minutes left. I want to say thank you to Jaime, uh, 
doing extra duty today, trying to keep everybody on camera and trying to put up some pictures for me and all those kind of things. Normally, I just sit down here in front of the camera, and he turns it on and takes a nap, you know. <laughs> no, he didn't. But uh, today, he had to do extra duty. So, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to double his salary tonight. And uh, he's laughing, but, you know, he keeps telling me double nothing is still nothing. But I'm, I double his salary tonight. But anyway, but uh, I am very appreciative, seriously, of what Jaime does. He does a great job in putting this whole thing together. Uh, as you know, we come on at 4 o'clock today. When I say we, me and others and a lot of stuff, but Jaime puts all of that together, and it's on at 4 o'clock, and then I come live at 5. Now, tomorrow uh, we'll be doing the same thing at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., but uh, also uh, before the show in the morning at 8 o'clock. Jaime comes on with the introduction, with the information, and gives it to us uh, there on the air. And then at 9 o'clock, I come on live at 9. So the Wiley Drake Show is live at 9 and at 5. And one hour before that is the what I call that we should have talked about this a while ago when the guys are here because they've all been to Vegas a lot. They visit over there. They preach over there and go to the casinos and wear their T-shirts and visit and preach in the casinos and so forth. But, you know, over there they have, uh, uh, when you go to a show, uh, they have what they call the opening act. If uh, When Elvis used to appear there, they'd have somebody else that was an opening act. When other people appear in Vegas and they're the headliner, uh, someone is the opening act. Well, I'm the headliner here. <laughs> Wiley Drake is the headliner on the Wiley Drake Show. And the opening act is Jaime Chan. That's the one hour before nine and the one hour before five. He's the opening act here uh, for the Wiley Drake Show. But I want to say to Jaime, thank you for that. I appreciate what he does. He's done a great job in putting things together. He's done a great job in presenting the Wiley Drake Show in a much more favorable uh, view and a much more favorable situation than before. On the screen behind me, you see United with Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, we are united with Israel. I would encourage you to go to unitedwithisrael.com, unitedwithisrael.com, and you can find products that they sell. Now, United with Israel is not a nonprofit. It is a for-profit company. Uh, Brother Michael Gerbitz runs that company over in Israel, and he is a great, mighty man of God. He is Jewish. He's not my Christian brother yet, but we're praying for him. But he has uh, a business there, and he gives a portion, a percentage of the business he gives to support Israel. And so we support Israel as well, and we praise God for him. Uh, there is one thing you can go there to supportisrael.com, and you can find out about, uh, uh, you can go to another website called rockets2roses.com. Rockets to Roses. You know what they do? These Qassam rockets that are fired on Israel, some five to 10,000 of them in the last few years, they take those remnants from those rockets, the steel from those rockets, and they take it into the art gallery, and the guy heats it up and bends it and shapes it and makes it into roses, makes it into menorahs and different things, and polishes them up, and they're gorgeous, beautiful things that you can purchase there on United with Israel, and I would encourage you to go there and purchase those products, because when you do, you're not only getting a good uh, product for your money, but a part of that money goes to support Israel dollars and cents, and so I support them and encourage you to do the same thing. Well, I want to say thank you to Bobby. we got 15 minutes, folks, actually about uh, 13 minutes before we go off of Crusade Radio, and uh, we want to say thank you to Bill and uh, Bobby for being on with us today. I want to say thank you for all that uh, they're doing, God's working through them and doing with them, and I want to say thank you for Reuben coming on. Reuben's entertaining the guys tonight. He does a Bible study on Monday nights, and they're going over there. And 
I was going to go, except I got invited by my family. <laughs> and I just believe God says the family comes before your ministry. I would have loved to go gone with Bobby and them, loved to go gone to that Bible study. But my daughter came by here today, and because I get free and tickets into Knott's Bear Farm as a veteran, I took the grandkids down to Knott's Bear Farm and got them in at a free and reduced rate. And so they're at Knott's Bear Farm, and they said, Dad, after we go to Knott's Bear Farm after your show tonight, we want to go to dinner. We want to buy you dinner. We want to take you out to dinner. And I could have said, no, I'm busy, but I didn't. I was a good grandpa and a good daddy. And I said, all right, as soon as my show's over, you guys call me and I'll pick you up and we'll go out to dinner. And uh, so I'm trying to be a good daddy, trying to be a good grandpa. I want to tell you a little bit about my family, if I could, in the last few minutes. The title of this show is going to be Street Preaching. But I'm going to tell you in these last few minutes a little bit of Drake history. I was born and raised in Arkansas. I was born November the 23rd, 1943. I lived there until I turned 17. In 17, I came to California in the United States Navy and went to Pearl Harbor. There in Pearl Harbor, I met a beautiful girl that actually was a Texan, but she lived in California. She was a valley girl out in the San Fernando Valley, and I fell in love with her on Waikiki Beach. And uh, we got married in 1962. In 1964, God gave us our first child. That's my daughter, Kimberly. In 1966, God gave us our second daughter. That's my daughter, Carla. And in 1976, 10 years later, during the centennial year, God gave my wife and I a third daughter. Her name is Jamie. And then, a little more than a year later, in 1978, God said, I want you to have a son. And God gave us a son. His name is Wiley Jr. And he is married to Crystal. They don't have any children yet, but they've only been married a couple of years. So just give them time, and uh, God will bring that about in his time, in his due time. Now, uh, Kimberly, Carla, Jamie, and Wiley are my four children. 1962, when I married Barbara Julianne Stevens, she was eight, 17, I was too. We started our life together and our family together. And then one other thing I want to tell you, and then I'll end this history lesson. In 1968, she said, honey, I think we ought to buy some property. You can see my wife's picture, monument there on the screen. She's buried right here at the church. But in 1968, she suggested we get a piece of property. I wasn't too much behind that, but I went along with it, trying to be a good husband. And we got that property, and I still own that property. Even though my wife uh, graduated and went to heaven, I still own the property in a way. So on January the 6th, Brother Jaime and I, my cameraman, and I are going to make a trip what I call an exploratory trip to the Big Island of Hawaii. If you live on the Big Island, we would entertain an idea of us coming to your house, to your business, or to your church to do a live Wiley Drake show. The week of January the 6th, we are going to do the Wiley Drake show live from the island of Hawaii. We've already found out there is good internet service there. And so we're going to broadcast live that week of January the 6th from Hawaii. I would love to be able to broadcast live from a church, from the pastor's study, from the sanctuary, from the parking lot, wherever you'd like for us to broadcast, we'll come and broadcast. Now, at absolutely free. We won't charge you a dime. We want to come and do that. We want to help the Lord's work. And we're going to have the theme that week. We're going to change our theme for one week. We'll still be under justice, mercy, and faith. But our theme for that week will be big things a big God is doing on the big island. Big things our big God is doing on the big island. I don't know where God will lead us after that. I don't know what God will lead us to do. But I do know this. God is good.
and God is great, and we're going to serve him. So if you'd like to be a part, I said, Lord, I want a signal from you, and I'd like to ask some of you to be a part of that signal. I said, God, if this is a wily thing, let me know, and I'll back away from it. If it's a God thing, I want to go ahead with it. And I decided that I would go ahead, and even though God didn't tell me, I would go ahead and get our tickets and get our trip set up and paid for. And so I did. And I asked that 20 people, 20 people would give $100 towards our trip. And if you do that, I believe God will bless you. All you got to do is send it here to the church, call me on the phone, tell me how you want to do it, however you'd like to do it. But I'd like to have 20 bucks, I mean 100 bucks <laughs> from 20 people. And when I made that appeal before, uh, I said, uh, I'm asking for that. And Brother Bobby Bible, who just left, gave me the first $100 toward that trip. I got 19 more to go. <laughs> if you'd like to be a part, you can be. But God's already provided the money for me to pay for it. But I'm just trying to reimburse our little savings account that uh, had enough in there to cover that, uh, $2,000. And uh, I want to say thank you to the young lady who provided. I, the best I could find was about $3,000 for the trip. And this dear young lady, godly woman, helped me, worked it out, and got us a trip for 2000 So if... 20 of you gave 100. That would completely reimburse our little account. And uh, so if God leads you to do that, fine. If not, don't you dare do it unless God tells you to. Don't you dare do it because of my appeal. I'm just telling you the circumstances. And if you give it, fine. If you don't, that's okay too. And may God bless you. And we want you to know we want to be an asset to the churches on the island of Hawaii. Now, that's the big island, folks, for those of you who do not know the islands. I don't know them that well, but I do know uh, the island that I met my dear wife on is the island of Oahu, and that's where Pearl Harbor is. That's where I was stationed. That's also where Waikiki Beach is. That's where we met. I was down at the beach looking for girls. That's what all sailors are supposed to do, right? And when I was there, I met this beautiful girl named Barbara Julianne Stevens. And later, I asked her to marry me, and she agreed. I was not even a Christian at the time. She shouldn't have married me because I wasn't a Christian, but she didn't know any better. She just fell in love and got stuck on stupid like I did, and we fell in love and got married. And shortly after I got, we got married, though, Barbara was already a Christian. She knew Jesus. And then... While in Vietnam, you've heard my testimony, but while in Vietnam, I came to know Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Now, a lot of people say, well, why do you tell all these stories? We've heard them all. Well, if I've told it before and you've heard it, I apologize. We've only got about uh, three or four minutes before we go off the air, ladies and gentlemen, on Crusade Radio. I want to say thank you to Crusade Radio for being our flagship. I was in the Navy, and when you had a group of ships... One of those ships was the flagship. I had the privilege to serve in the 7th Fleet, and I had the privilege to serve on the flagship, the USS Kitty Hawk. The USS Kitty Hawk was CVA-63, over a 1,000 foot long, big, big ship. And I spent almost four years aboard the Kitty Hawk and uh, served the Lord there as best I knew how. Came to know Jesus actually bowed my knee on the hangar bay of the USS Kitty Hawk and asked Jesus to come into my heart and into my life. And he did it there on the Kitty Hawk. I want you to pray for the Kitty Hawk. She's out of commission now. She's been retired. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. And I want to remind you that if you'd like to call us, our studio numbers are up on the screen. You can call us. We've only got about two minutes left on Crusade Radio, and uh, then we'll be leaving, and then a little after that, 
we'll leave the Ustream.tv as well. There's the USS Kitty Hawk, CVA-63. Brings back a lot of memories. I was on that bird, <laughs> at Bird Farm, they called it. And uh, we praise God for the USS Kitty Hawk, CVA-63. And I uh, want you to pray for the Kitty Hawk. The Kitty Hawk. By the way, if you're a Kitty Hawk veteran, you were on the veterans, on the Kitty Hawk, join the Kitty Hawk veterans. It's kittyhawkvets.com, kittyhawkvets.com, and you can join us. We'll be having a, another reunion. We have one every two years. We're going to be doing it uh, uh, again and pretty soon, about a year away, and we encourage you to be there and join us. But right now, I'm coming up on the last minute of my time with Crusade Radio. The Kitty Hawk was our flagship. The flagship in this fleet called the Whitey Drake Show, the flagship is Crusade Radio. Crusade Radio has been our flagship now for more than 12 years. And I want to say thank you to Crusade Radio for being our flagship. The flagship is the one that's in charge. The flagship is the one everybody turns to. And that's what we do here with Crusade Radio. You'll notice once in a while we lose picture, we lose video. But very seldom do we ever lose Crusade Radio because she is our flagship. But the male pot and his dear wife, Shimon Porterfield Pot, uh, do a great job in, in hosting, and we thank the Lord for that. May God bless you, and may God give you a great day. Crusade Radio. All right, folks, we're off Crusade Radio now. That means we have two minutes. I want to remind you that tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, you can watch the Whitey Drake Show from the Jaime Chan control board. You'll see the music. You'll see the inspiration. You'll see videos. You'll see a lot of good stuff from 8 to 9. And then at 9 o'clock, I'll come on live, Whitey Drake Show, live at 9, just like I did live at 5 this afternoon. Now, we're coming up in just a moment, folks, on the last minute of this show. But I want to remind you that we encourage you to donate to this church. Everything we do is under the auspices of the church. I've said three things about all of this ministry. Number one, we're a church. Number two, we're a church. Number three, we're a church. A lot of people do a lot of things around here. Brother Will Ruffin teaches Bible study at 945 every Sunday morning. Jaime runs the board, keeps us up on the air. I'm the pastor here. Uh, Brenda is the cook and the food coordinator. If you need food or clothing, call Brenda at 714-818-1884. And I would encourage you to do that. May God bless you. May God help you. We've got about 30 seconds left before we go off. I want to remind you we'll be back here tomorrow morning. 8 o'clock with Jaime, 9 o'clock with me, and we'll praise the Lord. In the meantime, if you'd like to call me, my phone number is 714-865-8132. Remember, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God.